Nation, happy Tuesday. It's time. It's time to go live, bring value, help answer your questions. Tuesday is my YouTube day, so I spend the whole day working on my YouTube channel, getting uh, new ideas, reviewing my strategy. Just got off a call right now with someone on my team who does all my thumbnails, and we've done over 2,000. We've officially crossed the 2,000 uh, thumbnail split test experiment mark, which is crazy. Uh, so we're going over all the thumbnail designs, coming up with new video topics, and I'm spending the whole day, apart from this, basically working on my YouTube channel. So. Welcome everybody, great to see you. Welcome, 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 welcome. Shriman, Shriman, Rohit, Dharami. I love it, welcome Rob, Ria, Sana. This is great. Uh, Adam, what else? Who's Zaifa, hope I pronounced that okay. Max, I love it. Anyway, pop your questions, see if we go some, we do some lives. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to uh, try to bring some value. Frank Vila in the house. How you doing, Frank? How's the journey, man? How's the journey? Frank Vila uh, is an artist, used art to get out of his uh, heroin addiction. That must be rough now, actually, man. I mean, I know you, you had that place you're going to, to practice your art, be in the community. It's probably shut down right now, right? With everything going on. You gotta create a new community, Instagram community. Bring it online, bring it online, share some love. All right, uh, I am too. All right, I missed I missed what it was. Joe, welcome. You are too. What? Hey, Evan. I am the learner. Welcome aboard. Appreciate you. Thanks for the shout out. Huge fan. Thank you. Thank you, Ria. Appreciate you. What else? Great recovery story. Nice. Yeah, it is. Frank Vila's got a great. We did a. If you go back on my channel, you can look at it. Um, you'll see a one on one Frank and I did for about. Uh, what, half an hour, Frank? How long did we talk for? We had a, we had a good chat. Uh, lots of great lessons there. Frank's telling a story. If anybody's kind of overcoming drug addiction or addiction of any kind, I think it could be a helpful, helpful story for you. Uh, Marco in the house. Hey, brother. Welcome aboard, man. Hey, Evan. You see most of his motivational videos. Have you mastered all of what they advise? Uh, you never master everything. Everybody's a constant work in progress, right? Everybody's a constant work in progress, always. So, uh, you know, whatever you see on my channel is a reflection of what I'm working on, what I'm working through, why don't we get better at? And uh, even when you've mastered it, you still haven't mastered it. Like I look at, I look at my YouTube channel and uh, people think I'm a thumbnail expert and YouTube expert, and I am. And I'm telling myself and my team that we suck and we're just getting started. I need to get better, right? We crossed 2,000 thumbnail split tests today, completed another 180 something in, in progress. I've, I've never seen anybody even come close to that many thumbnails. So you could say I've mastered it, but the attitude we're taking is we're just starting. We're just trying to figure it out ourselves constantly, right? Uh, I know Marcus had some questions. I don't see Marcus here in the chat. Marcus, if you're here, let me know if you're on a different account. Let me know so we can we can get to your stuff as well. I don't see Marcus here in the chat though. Anyway, Marcus, if you're there. Benjamin in the house, Carlos in the house. I love it. Believe Nation is showing up. Okay, what else? Uh, let's pop some questions here. How do I stop feeling so stressed and losing control of my feelings? So one, I'd say um, you need to remove yourself a little bit from the chaos, distance yourself from the chaos, be informed, understand what's happening, but checking the news every 20 minutes to see how many people have died from coronavirus is not gonna help you, right? It doesn't mean be ignorant, but, but staying in the chaos is not gonna help you get to where you need to be. It's not gonna help you get uh, de-stressed, right? So stay informed, but severely limit how much, uh, time you're spending in the chaos because you can't be centered when it's all sorts of chaos around you. Uh, second is, is fill your, fill your day with, with people, with resources, with ideas that make you feel better, that lift you up, that give you hope, that give you energy. Um, I started a new channel on my YouTube called preserving IG lives for history. 
where there's so many great people going live right now. Everybody's going live, right? I mean, they can't make content, they can't, they don't have their team, they're not in their office. So, so many people are going live right now, and so many people have this fantastic message of hope. And I want to share that. And and it bothered me that it's disappearing in 24 hours. That if you didn't magically get there in time to see them, that it's gone. So. If you look up my channel or just look up Preserving IG Lives for History, you'll see a whole bunch of amazing messages from all the people that I profile on my channel. And, and have more of that because if everybody in your life and around you is stressing and freaking out, but then you're, you're surrounded by other people through content, uh, people saying, hey, this is your chance to be a leader. This is the time to spread hope. This is, this is the time to, to, to step up because your community, your family, they need you. They need you to be better right now. Right, having that message of hope can make you stronger and and um, release some of the stress. So that's what I would do. Okay, let's see. Keep the questions coming. Let me see if I can find Marcus. Uh, Jimmy in the house. I love it. Jimmy. Jimmy is pure energy. Jimmy, are you making your videos? If you don't know, if you guys don't know, uh, Jimmy Mize. Jimmy Mize is is energy unleashed. Expect some amazing content coming from this man very, 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 very soon. Right, Jimmy? Where's the content, my guy? Make it happen. I want to see it. What else? Turn off the negative media. Yeah, I mean, again, stay informed. Understand what's happening. Know what's happening in your country, especially. But you don't need to be on it every 20 minutes, right? You could check in once a day or twice a day just to know what's happening. But then it's, it's, the, it's the constant like, oh my God, what, what's happening now? How many people have died now? What's the world? Like people are just living in it constantly and that does not allow you to gain perspective to actually go and build something better for yourself, right? So stay informed, don't be completely ignorant, but checking in twice a day, uh, that's enough. That's enough. Focus on then what, what can you actually do in your life, in your business. Inspired by Jimmy, that's right. I love it, Jimmy. I love it. Make it happen. Okay, hold on, do I see Marcus here? Let's see, has Marcus joined? Maybe Marcus had an issue. I don't see Marcus here yet. Marcus, 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 don't see you there, man. If you're there, let me know. Okay, let's see. How am I supposed to get rid of a bad habit? So it starts with the desire, like why do you wanna get rid of the bad habit? It's gotta be big enough why. There's something in a bad habit that you like, right? Your bad habit right now gives you pleasure, makes you feel good. Even though you know it's not in your best long-term interest, there's something about it that makes you feel good. So you need to associate more pain to it. What's the big why? You know, if you don't change this, what happens? And not what happens in 40 years, right? That's the problem. It's like, oh, if I, if I don't stop smoking, I'm gonna get cancer in 40 years and die. Great, that's not enough of a pain point, right? You have to make it more real, more present. So it, start, it starts with the, the strong why. Um, next step is whatever it is that makes you feel strong about it, then you put that as part of your daily routine. So for example, my friend uh, Mark Drager is, has joined me on my uh, fasting. So he's doing fasting. Uh, and I saw this Reddit thread where people are posting their fasting pictures and it, it shows People are posting like when they were 200 pounds and now they're 160. Uh, and every day there's more people posting their success stories. So I told Mark, hey, put this as part of your morning routine. Like put this as part of what websites you load every day to see success stories. When I was doing, so the, the Wim Hof cold breathing as an example, right? Uh, cold cold uh, showers, breathing. Let me show you. I look, listen, this is what I did. This is what I did. Look, look. I'm gonna take you into my, my spare bathroom. Look, we're going, we're going to, oops, hold on. Look, look. So, oh, got my phone, hold on. Got my phone, we're going, we're going, to, we're going handheld now. We're going handheld. <laughs> See, look at this, right? If we always choose comfort, we'll never learn the deepest capabilities of our mind or bodies. Wim the Iceman Hoff, and this picture, oh, maybe I should turn off the light, it's kind of hard to see. This picture of Wim like sitting in a frozen lake, and and I see this every day, right? And it's right next to my right next to the shower, right here, right? And so it's a constant reminder. And so when I was when I was having a, a harder time getting used to it, now I do the, I do the breathing every day. Do some I do cold every day. It's become part of the habit, right? That I actually don't need that. 
really anymore, but it's still pretty cool, right? Um, but when I was first getting that habit started, I don't know anybody like Wim Hof, right? I mean, I'm not, none of my friends are doing these breathing and cold showers and everybody thinks I'm crazy, right? Nobody's doing that in my circle. So I needed to create a new circle for myself. And so that poster was like, this has to get printed today, right? And, and uh, Nina, my wife, found an awesome place to print it. We got it framed and boom, it went up on the wall. I subscribed to Wim Hof's YouTube channel. I followed him on Instagram. Like I wanted um, as much of that around me as possible to remind myself to go off and do it. Um, other people who are doing it, like Scott Carney uh, and a bunch of other people who are doing the, the cold and the breathing so that everywhere I went, there was that constant source. You know, if you started hanging around people who were super fit and exercising all the time, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna be fit and exercise all the time. You just will, like you'll, you'll whoever's more confident wins. So they're more confident in their being fit and exercising. And so you're gonna get pulled into that. Um, so you may not be able to hang out with people right now, especially, but you can see their content virtually. So think about who you're following on Instagram. Think about what's in your morning routine. What videos are you watching? If you want more belief in your life, my channel is the best thing for you, right? It's, it's going to give you belief every day. If you want more of something else, you want more motivation to quit smoking or start cold baths or breathing or working out or weight loss or sales. There's somebody who's the expert at that. Follow them everywhere. Subscribe to everything they're doing so that they're constantly in your ear as a reminder to move forward. Make sense? Oops, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oops. Wow, come on, come on, come on. How do I get rid of this thing? Oops. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey, you come on in the house. Appreciate you. Let's give one last look to see if Marcus is here. Maybe he had some issues getting in. Hold on, hold on. Happy Tuesday. Hope you, hope you guys are doing well. I, I'm. You okay, Nina? Who's needy, Timo? I can't click on the add people in now. Wow, okay, I don't know what's happening. Uh, what else? Rhea, how do, I, how, do I get rid of, how do I get rid of my loneliness during this time when I feel like none of my friends are connecting with me? Um, one, have empathy for your friends. Whenever, whenever you feel like people are letting you down, start with empathy. Start by trying to get out of your shoes and into their shoes. Start by thinking about what are they going through? Like maybe your friends aren't, aren't, aren't uh, trying to ignore you. Maybe they're stressed out. Maybe they're dealing with their crap right now, right? Maybe somebody in their family got sick. Maybe they're struggling with their business. Like maybe they've got a bunch on their plate. So default start place of empathy uh, that they're doing the best that they can right now. They don't hate you, right? They're just struggling. Uh, two, that doesn't, that doesn't relieve the loneliness, that just removes the sting. Because my friends should be supporting me. They're not supporting you. Uh, so that, that can hurt. So empathy removes the sting. It doesn't solve the problem of loneliness. If you wanna go off and fix that, then you start hanging out. Like you're here, welcome. It's great to have you. Thank you for coming on board. It's, you're amazing, right? Start, start becoming part of other communities. And you can't go out you know, of your home and do something now, but you can join lots of online communities. Lots of people are going live. Comment on people's videos. Try to join in uh, uh, in live forums. Go to people's uh, communities and, and get involved and cheer people on, right? Let people know what you're up to and start forming some new friends that once we get through all this, maybe you've got some extra new amazing friends that, that you can you know, get to know for the rest of your life and maybe you don't spend as much time with your old friends. I don't know. Right? But step one, empathy to remove the sting. Step two, start reaching out, just like you did right here. Like you're already doing it. You're, you're already feeling a little bit less lonely by being here. It's great to have you. Thank you for popping in. Okay, let's see, hold on. I can't, I can't bring anybody in. I don't know what the problem is. Instagram is... Suki, yes, virtual connections. Anyway, I don't know. I'm clicking on the two faces, but I can't bring people in. I don't know what's happening. All right. Uh, anyway, I didn't see Marcus here anyway, so that's fine. Uh, but I can't bring anybody else in either. So apologize. But if you want to leave, leave your comments below or just use the question box, it's great. Danny, hey, I haven't got your book today. I love it. I love it, Danny. That's amazing. Thank you for the love. Enjoy. Happy reading. If you take a picture and post it to your Instagram and tag me, I'll share it. This is the... Ha this is the there you go. 
Rhea, we're all in it together. Rhea saying, thanks, Suki. You just made another friend. You got people, Leave Nation's always a great place, great place to start. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, yes. A great, a great way to hack people's audiences is whenever they're in promotion mode to, to help them, right? So you can't, you can't, people often message me to say, hey, can I get a shout out? Can I get a shout out? Can I get a shout out on your channel? Like, it's never gonna happen. I don't know you. You're not gonna get a shout out. But right now, I'm from my book, Built to Serve, right? If you, if you buy my book and take a picture of it and tag me, I'm probably gonna share it, right? That's, that's 27 bucks for the book or, or whatever it is for the ebook or audio book, right? You can even get it for free on Audible if you get the, I forget what you have to do, you get the, you get the free trial or whatever, but you get a book for free. Take a picture, tag me, I'm probably gonna share it. So, but worst case, 27 bucks, you're getting a shout out, right? That's some pretty effective marketing. And don't just do that with me, think about whoever, whoever it is that you're trying to, you want to shout out from or you want to hack their audience, that's the best way to do it. So, you got your book? Amazing. I love it. Share it. And I'll share it too. Uh, okay, what else? I got lots of questions coming in. We'll try to go through quick. How to derive motivation for keeping up, how to derive motivation for keeping up with the to-do list. Uh, one, the things have to be things that motivate you. A lot of people have a to-do list that they're actually not pumped for. So, in the micro, maybe you have to get some things done and every day in entrepreneurship, there's things that you don't wanna do that you have to do, but, but long-term, if you're not doing it, uh, you're, you're not gonna be happy doing work that you hate. So the, the intrinsic motivation should come from the work itself. You love, I don't, today's my YouTube day, I don't think I'm motivated to go make YouTube videos. I like it, right? Net, I love it. Um, so if you're, not, if you're not doing your to-do list, either one, you don't like what's on your list and that's never gonna work long term or two, you're afraid of what's on your list. You're afraid that you're not good enough. You're afraid that you're not gonna get results. You're afraid that you're not gonna win. You're afraid that you're gonna get judged and that's not a good enough reason. Like teach yourself, that's not a good enough reason. Being afraid is not a good enough reason. You're an entrepreneur, you gotta go. Prezios Donato, I tagged you on my Instagram with a pic of your book. Awesome, let me know uh, if I didn't, if. So usually within 24 hours, because my Instagram is nuts, bonkers, crazy right now. But uh, if, if I haven't tagged you within 24 hours and shared it, DM me and let me know. Uh, I am Meigs. Does having a nickname as your brand name hinder your potential to work with corporate clients? Um, not necessarily. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Really, um, the bar is... The bar for what is professional is, is really changing. What they care about is can you help them? Do you have an audience? Can you help them? Right? So I wouldn't worry so much about it. Uh, in general, a, a face is easier to connect to than a logo. Uh, a name is easier to connect to than a nickname. But at the end of the day, it's not going to really matter that much. Do people not want to work with Jay-Z because he called himself Jay-Z? People want to work with Jay-Z. Right? I wouldn't worry so much about the name. More important is how much thinking you're doing about the name. Manny making moves. How to deal with a death of a loved one and not fall into victim mentality as hard as it is and stay strong. So separating grief from the victim mentality I think is really important. So I'm not, I try not to stay in any negative emotion for too long except for grief. Grief is the only one that uh, you, I think you, you need to feel and you need to work through and you can't just push it away. Anything else, jealousy, anger, rage, um, think about all the other negative emotions. None of them are healthy and I don't, I don't wanna live there. I don't wanna live in jealousy. I don't wanna live in hatred. I don't wanna live in rage. I don't wanna live in these negative emotions. Uh, and so I'll try to force myself out of it as, as quickly as possible. Grief though is its own beast. I don't, I don't think that pushing through grief uh, is actually that healthy. I don't think that you telling yourself, I can't feel grief right now, I need to be doing this, actually serves you that well. I think you need to, you need to process it, you need to go through it. <coughs> Fortunately, I haven't lost anybody in a long time, but um, the most recent one was my, my parents' dog, my dog growing up, right, of I don't know how many years. 
and um, you know some of you may not care that much about dogs, but dogs become a big part of the family. And when when uh, we had to put our dog down because he had cancer through his whole body and was suffering, that was a really hard. Um, it was really hard. And I was supposed to make videos that day, and I I couldn't make videos that day. Uh, and so for those hardcore fans of mine, we've got. Uh, if you can go back on the channel, you can see we should show the picture. We still made videos. I wasn't saying anything in them. Um, we just had a message of what happened and pictures of, of my dog, Toby, and me and Toby, and I think some video clips that came out. And so for that week, we still had videos, but I wasn't in them, just that message. Um, and then you go through it, and, and with time, you'll get better. But sh taking away the victim mentality, I think, is important. Like taking away the why me? Why does this happen to me? Why can't it happen to somebody else? That is not going to serve you. But the loss, the grief, um, I think you actually have to just go through and let time heal as opposed to just telling yourself, this is amazing. What a great day. Happy Tuesday. Wow, the sun is shining. Right? I think grief is one that you have to process. And sorry for your loss. Really. Uh, Din Mux Ahmed. What do you think about COVID-19? Uh, I think it's I think it's real. I think you adjust. I think it's uh, just another problem that you face as an entrepreneur. And then I think you you leverage and maximize what you've got. I think it's going to be a great time. Uh, out, out of out of great negativity, always comes the greatest things, right? Your purpose comes from your pain. Whatever you struggle the most with is the thing you want to help other people with. So, whatever is showing up for you right now, in in this isolation, whatever deep pain it's causing you is now what you have to go and fix in your life. So for some people, it's connection to family. And then you got to think, well, how can I now, add, once this is done, have a stronger connection to my family? Like if you're so deeply worried about uh, your parents or grandparents or friends, amazing. I mean, you should be. But if it really hits you hard, then once we're through this, start to think, how can I build deeper connections with these people? Right? You're missing it. For people who are super worried about their business, uh, great, use it as your chance to get ahead, right? Uh, my business isn't super impacted because I can still make content, I can still do interviews, I can still come live on Instagram, we're still doing our thing. Nobody on my team is sick, you know, thank you. Everybody's in self-isolation and either in Canada here where I'm at or from their own countries where they're working from. Um, my other business though, Toronto Dance Salsa, is massively impacted, right? The largest salsa dance that you're taking off? You got your mask on? Where are you going? Um, I'm going to go to the bank. Going to the bank? Yeah. Okay. There's not any bank over there. Okay. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Uh, Toronto Dance Salsa is shut down. It's the largest dance studio for salsa, maybe North America. We'll teach up to 5,000 people a year how to dance. And, and now we can't, right? I mean, this, Nobody's going to a salsa class, and it's actually been officially shut down by the government. Uh, we, sh we shut ourselves down before the government, but now it's actually illegal to operate. So what are we doing? For, and who knows how long it's going to take, right? Is, is it another couple of weeks? Is it a couple of months? I don't know. <laughs> Jimmy says hi. Hi, Jimmy. <laughs> he says hi with a lot of eyes or exclamation marks. He's very excited. <laughs> Yo, you can always count on Jimmy for the energy. Uh, so... What's Alex doing? Alex helps me run that business. So Alex is looking at making online videos, right? Online classes. Can't wait to go to Toronto Dance Salsa. You gotta, you gotta wait now. You gotta wait till we're through this. But Alex is making online classes, right? Uh, Alex is looking to recruit new instructors to join the school, so that when we're through this, we've, we're stronger than when uh, we're stronger than when we started. Suki saying hi. Everybody, everybody say hi to Nina. Everybody loves you, Nina. Believe Nation. Hello. <laughs> so you can use this as a chance, right? Hustle while you wait. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting for to get through this. Great. Instead of sitting there complaining and watching Netflix, hustle. Hustle while you wait. Hustle while you wait. What's super interesting, uh, almost every thought leader channel right now is down. Every, almost every thought leader channel on YouTube, uh, Brendan Burchard and Tony Robbins and D 
Dean Graziosi and all these guys, almost all their channels, their views are down. Even though they're still making content, their views are down. And you think, well, channels should be going up. Like, why are channels not going up? Everybody's at home. They they're, should be consuming content. Like, yeah, but they're consuming different content. People are not consuming self-growth educational content. People are consuming either entertainment to forget about the, the, the reality of the world right now, or they're consuming coronavirus news. Look at the top trending right now on YouTube. It's going to be all coronavirus stuff. And I think it's, uh, it's telling, but it's also sad. It's, this is the time to learn and get ahead. This is your opportunity to, to become amazing, to work on the skill you need to work on, to, to invest in yourself and learn and get better. Um, so I think it's really sad, but, but this is your chance to be the leader, at least for yourself, if not for other people, to encourage yourself. I mean, you're here. Hey, welcome. We're not here to, to shut off the world and just be entertained. I'm not here singing or telling you jokes or <laughs> something silly. Um, so you're here. You guys are the special ones. But now it's, it's taking that into every day. So what are you going to do for the rest of the day? What are you going to do tomorrow? How are you going to learn? How are you going to get better? The techie guy. It's self-study time. That's right. How are you guys? How's vidIQ doing? Are you guys up or down? Uh, it's shocking that channels aren't up. The channels that are up are the entertainment channels and the um, news channels. But you invest in yourself, start learning, and then, and then spread it. Spread the message. For your friends that are complaining, for the people around you, your family that are scared, help them. Help them learn something. It makes a big difference. I love Insta- I love Evan's IG series on his YouTube. Yeah, so I'm doing that too, right? I talked earlier about it on this stream, but we're taking people who are uh, lots of people are going live right now. All the all the people you love are going live right now. Whether it's me or, or Grant or uh, Russell Simmons or Mel Robbins or Gary, all, all people are going live constantly. So I started a new channel called Preserving IG Lives for History. And we, we published, I want to say 30 videos or something yesterday of different people. And everybody is, it's always, it's always a message of hope, right? People are sharing their message of hope and how they're dealing with it and how they're coping and what they want their audiences to learn. And if you don't happen to watch it in the 24 hours that it, that it's up, you've missed it. So I'm, I, I started a new channel, Preserving IG Lives for History. It has a yellow icon um, so that you can go back and watch the videos because I think it's needed. I think it's needed. Anyway, we spent a long time on that question, but hopefully it helps. All right. Uh, Adil, the actor. How do, how do you develop discipline to work on your craft and stop laziness? Mine is acting and writing. You're not lazy. Nobody's lazy you are either not excited about your goals or you're scared by them, right? Same thing that I talked about before, about procrastination. You're not inherently lazy. If you made me do accounting work all day, I would be so bored. I would be, I would be lazy. I would hate my life. I just don't like doing accounting work. If, you, if that's you, awesome. You love it, I respect you. I'd love to work with you, right? I mean, Nina does a lot of it for us. Uh, and my accountant, he loves it. Amazing. I hate it. It's great. Well, it's a great combination. So if you're forcing yourself to develop discipline, then again, you either don't want to do it. And so you need to find something else or, um, or you're afraid of it. And so you need to go through. So if it's acting and writing, do you actually want to be an actor? Do you actually love writing? If you do, then the problem is you're afraid of it. You're afraid that you're not a good enough actor. You're not, you're not a good enough writer, that you're going to write something and it's going to flop, that people won't come and see it, that people tell you that you suck. And that's not a good enough reason. You teach yourself that you do scary things. Best tips to motivate myself, Antonio. Uh, figure out what your one word is, your most important core value, and then surround yourself with it daily. So mine is believe. So I surround myself with believe. Oops. I surround myself with believe daily, right? Even from even from the like the hoodie that I wear, right? I feel like Superman putting this on. The hoodie that I wear, the environment in my office, the videos that I uh, that I create, I create the videos on my channel for me, 
And then I share that with other people because I want more belief daily because I want Elon Musk in my ear and I want Oprah Winfrey in my ear. I want, I want to, no matter how much I think I'm doing well, I want to be around people who are doing that much better. And it pushes me and forces me to get better. So figure out what the one word most important core value is for you and then adjust your physical environment, your habits, your rituals, your routines to inject more of that every single day. Uh, what else? Is it, I am a toxic person. I always feel insecure about people around me. No, it's just down to self-love. You're not toxic, you just don't love yourself. This becomes a self-love issue. Uh, so how do you get self-love? How do you get self-confidence? How do you get self-respect? Is by doing difficult things. I actually love comparing to others. I, I actually think it's very healthy and great. The problem is you don't love yourself enough and so you can't handle the comparison. But I think the comparison is fantastic because it shows you what's possible. The key is to use it as a kick forward instead of a kick down. Most people will see somebody else having success and they'll kick themselves down to say, I can't do that, I'm not good enough, I don't have the skills. Look at what they're doing, look at how much success they accomplished by that age and I'm already older than them, I suck, right? As opposed to using it as a kick forward to say, here's what's possible, I'm gonna go off and get better. So how do you develop? Self-love, stop being as toxic um, by doing difficult things, by following through on the things you say you're gonna do. The problem for most people, why they don't love themselves is they set goals for themselves. They tell themselves, you tell yourself you're gonna do something. You tell yourself, I'm gonna do this. That one hit hard. <laughs> Appreciate the love. Um, you tell yourself you're gonna do something and you don't follow through. And so the next time you tell yourself you're gonna do something, the problem is you know in your head you're gonna say, I'm not gonna do that. So you have no respect for yourself because every time you set a goal for yourself, you know you're gonna break it. Whether it's the next day, the next week, the next month, you know you're gonna break it. And so now you don't believe yourself anymore. Now you look at your list of goals and to-dos and you watch some videos saying how you have to write down your goal list and you write it down and you're energized and the next day you wake up and you look at that goal list and say, I can't do that. That's the message that you've taught yourself, which is extremely unhealthy, extremely dangerous and prevents you from accomplishing your goals and now makes you think that you're a toxic person. You're not a toxic person. You're built to serve. You're built to love. You're built to help but you can't really go off and love others until you love yourself. You can't really be a gift to the world and help and support these people that you're looking up to that are around you. You want to, you want to support them. You want to love them. You want to help them. You want to be cheering them on. You do, but you can't do that if you don't love yourself. You can, you can fake clap them. You can fake say, hey, congratulations, but in, inside your heart, you know that you're not happy. And it's not that you actually, you secretly want them to lose, but it's not that you actually want them to lose. You just want you to win. You're more disappointed with yourself than anything else. So the best thing you can do is start leaning in to accomplishing your goals. Have fewer goals, pick one goal, and then just stick to it. And, and recognize that your goals don't count until they're hard. Right? Nothing, it's not gonna count until it's hard. You're gonna come up with obstacles in your way that's gonna prevent you from achieving it. That's when it actually counts. Like making a video every day, great. It's easy when you've had a lot of sleep and you're, you're well rested and you've had tons of time to plan it. What about when you're tired or you're sick or you feel uninspired? That's when it counts, that's when you make the video. Making yourself proud of the effort that you're putting in every day. Building credibility with yourself. So when you, you need to teach yourself that when you say you're gonna do something, you do it, period. Until you get to that point where you actually start to believe in yourself, believe that when you say you're gonna do something, you actually follow through, you're never gonna accomplish the things you want and you're always gonna feel like this toxic person. You're not a toxic person. You are built to serve. You just need to love yourself more and build that credibility with yourself. So fewer goals, figure out the one thing or you need to start to work on that every day for the next 30 days you're gonna do no matter what. 
and expect it to get hard somewhere in there and then still go do it. That's when you start to love yourself more. That's when everything starts to change. Good luck. Marion, what is your self-talk when you feel fear? Uh, I have ingrained in myself. So I, I, I used to do, let me tell you what I used to do and then I'll tell you what I do now. What I used to do was I would create a bigger fear. I used to imagine my life at 95 years old or whatever, looking back and saying, this thing that I'm afraid of, whatever, whatever we're afraid of, we're afraid of, I'm afraid of speaking on that stage. I'm afraid of taking that call. I'm afraid of doing that interview. I'm afraid of doing an IG live, right? If I was afraid of doing an IG live, what I would do is tell myself this IG live right now is going to be the thing that changes everything for me. It's going to be the thing that blows up my entire career. And when I'm 95 looking back, I could come back to that IG Live and say in 2020, that IG Live, that was the moment it all exploded and changed for me. And if I don't do it because I'm afraid, I'm going to regret it my whole life. I'm going to have 60 years of me regretting this. And so I create so much pain. This is what I used to do all the time. I create so much pain in myself about future regret that it was forced me through the immediate pain, that it becomes a bigger pain. So I have to do it because the pain of not doing now becomes greater than the pain of doing. It's not about being fearless. It's about feeling the fear and doing it anyway and injecting greater fear into yourself. Just like if you have a little hangnail and it really hurts and then somebody punches you in the arm, you don't feel the hangnail anymore because this hurts too much. So that's what literally I would do to myself constantly to get myself into action. I haven't done that in the past couple of years though because that requires a mental exercise where you need to logically tell yourself, I'm, I'm just afraid and I need to combat that fear by creating future fear. And most of the time you won't catch it. So what I've done in the past couple of years to shortcut it, to short circuit it, to get there faster is scary, difficult or hard. Whenever I feel myself saying scary, difficult or hard, wherever, I, wherever I'm telling myself that or if I'm talking to somebody else saying that, then I have to do it just because Evan Carmichael does scary things, period. Marion McCutcheon does scary things, period. You teach yourself that, that being afraid is not a good enough reason. And this is part of what, you know, last year when I was speaking on, um, you know, a couple thousand people on stage and I was having my panic attack backstage, that's, that was the voice in my head was, I was blanking out. I was panicking that I'm not going to crush this speech. And I tell myself, I'm Evan Carmichael. I do scary things. That's, that's exactly what I do right now. So scary, difficult, hard, your fear is not a good enough reason. And then get to work. The best thing you can do is teach yourself that that scary thing, even if it doesn't work out, even if you fail, even if you, you, you make the worst video of all time, you embarrass yourself. Awesome. You did the scary thing. You pat yourself on the back and you reward yourself for it. Good luck. Uh, Stephen Smith, SRQ. Uh, we did an awesome live with Stephen yesterday. Go check him out on YouTube. Uh, he's building his, his channel up about morning sunrise meditation. Um, so I'm excited to see that growth. Good luck, Stephen. Why did you decide to start live videos versus only tape videos Given a personal touch. Why did you decide to start doing live video versus only tape videos given a personal touch? I love interaction. Like this is not uh, a strategy for me. It's not that, hey, go, go live on IG every day because it's going to help you build your channel. Some people who do that, if it's only just a strategy, you're going to lose. I love it. I genuinely love it. My, I got hooked on Instagram because of lives and bringing people in. I, it upsets me so much that Whatever is happening on Instagram right now, I can't bring people in because answering text questions is one thing, but actually being able to help somebody face to face and knowing that there's Steven in Florida learning and growing and getting better and, and the work that I did, the time that we spent mattered to him and hopefully matters to other people uh, is really meaningful. So as soon as I discovered that on Instagram, I was already going live on YouTube as much as eight times a day on some days. But it's, it's, YouTube is like this, it's text, uh, which is great, but I love, I love bringing people in. I love the face-to-face. -face. 
so much more. So I started doing that because I loved it. Because it makes me happy. Because it fills my soul. That's why. Uh, Kieran Davis, how do you not focus on the numbers in the beginning? Um, I think looking at, looking at numbers um, can be good, but recognize that it's going to take time. And, and the thing that I really focus on is am I getting better? Like to focus on the progress. Even now, I'm not looking at the numbers. Even now, it's not the number one thing. But I think it, just like money, I think the numbers for what you're creating needs to be in your top five. It's just not number one. Money needs to be in your top five, but it's just not number one. It's that same equivalent of the results. The results matter. The results matter. It's just not number one. So when you're getting started, number one should be your progress. How much are you getting better? Uh, I started a new series on my Red channel where I'm showing me basically talking about the same points because I've been doing this for so long, right? It's been 11 years almost. April will be 11 years on YouTube. If you go back and look at my old content, you'll see the growth. And so I've started a new series where I compare myself in a 2019, 2020 video talking about a topic and it'll show me talking about the same topic from 2014 or 2015 or 2011, this next one coming up. And you can see how much I've gotten better, hopefully, <laughs> in the process of making all these videos. And so you focus on the progress. Are you getting better? Are you practicing something? And if you keep practicing, you keep getting better, you're going to start winning. And winning will turn into numbers. Winning will turn into money. Winning will turn into results. Hoop loud in the house. What are great metrics for success when building a business when your subscribers aren't growing? Same question, right? Um, your progress. Are you getting better, right? You start paying attention to uh, your efforts, your experiments, your connection, your effort level, um, numbers on YouTube, you're looking at your audience retention. Are people paying attention to it? Are people watching all the way through? You know, if you have a big drop off at the beginning, how do I fix that? How do you work on it? How do you improve it? Your thumbnail click through rate, right? If it's low, you're trying to make it better all the time. But most importantly is, are you putting in effort and creativity and love? And are you proud of yourself for the videos that you're making every day? Because if you do that, you're gonna start to win. Once you start getting numbers, like once you get sizable, then it's easier to dive into the numbers, but it's still not the number one thing. I could boost my click-through rate if I posted something crazy sensational, or if I went, like if I made a video today on YouTube, we're all gonna die from the coronavirus. It would blow up. But that's not the kind of video I wanna make, right? So that's why numbers, metrics have to be in your top five, but it's not number one. What else? Uh, Psyche, what if I do my hobbies, the ones which I'm best at, what if, what to do, sorry, if my hobbies stop me from being successful, should I avoid it? Um, I don't know why your hobbies would stop you from being successful. Uh, all you have to do is figure out how you have your hobbies and turn that into value for other people. Right, success in business comes from bringing value to other people. Success in life comes from bringing value to other people. Right, you're built to serve. You'll feel great as a human if you're helping other people. But success will come from helping other people. So, your hobbies are just things that you're doing for you. Now you need to translate that as how how is the stuff that I love doing? How can I turn that into something that brings value to other people? So for me. I loved learning from successful entrepreneurs, right? Bill Gates saved my company, even though I've never met him. Learning from his, um, learning from how he started his company, that saved my business. And anytime I don't know what to do, I model somebody who's had success. I love it for me. I would still be doing videos for me. I wouldn't have as much editing and music and all that stuff, but I would still be doing it because I need the videos that are on my channel. What I did was figure out a way to turn my hobby into a business 
by still doing what I love and bringing it to other people so that hopefully they find value in it too. I didn't want to have to even make my videos, right? I, I, I would love to just be a consumer. Psyche, I wish you made my channel. Then I could just watch the videos and not have to make them. But nobody was doing it, so I did it. But I turned what I love doing into something that brought value to other people. That's the only missing link. You have a hobby, you love doing it, amazing. How do you turn that into something that helps other people and brings them value too? So you can start getting paid. Instead of you thinking that your hobby is preventing you from being successful. Uh, what else? Abhishek, CEO. Hey, Evan, what's your long-term game plan? I don't have one. Um, I'm mission-driven, so I want to solve the world's biggest problem. People don't believe in themselves enough. And then after that, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm doing You know, next month. Right now I'm making videos, I'm doing my book launch. Um, uh, speaking is totally dead at the moment because you can't travel and there's no events. But um, I think people screw themselves over when they make long-term plans, to be honest. Like I think, I think well, I don't know what long-term looks like for you, 10 years? So imagine you in 10 years, what you wanna be. You have no idea what you're capable of doing in 10 years, no idea. You don't know what you're capable of in a 10 year window. The problem is you could you can make a plan and hit it, but it's actually small compared to what you're capable of. So just look backwards. Think about who you were in 2010. Could 2010 you predict where 2020 you is going to be? Like where you are right now. Could 2010 you have any idea, could predict, imagine who you were 10 years ago. Could you have any idea of where you are right now? Now 2010 you can't plan for where you're at right now. There's no, there's no idea, zero. Like 2010 me, I was just getting started on YouTube. I would never have said this is where I was gonna be. So this is the danger in long-term planning. It doesn't mean have no plan, but I think a lot of people create this plan and they have to stick to the plan. And meanwhile, three years into your plan, you should jump off and do something else. Now, you're purpose-driven, you're mission-driven, whatever you struggled with, right? Humans are built to serve. Your purpose comes from your pain. Whatever you struggled with is the thing you wanna help other people with. I wanna help entrepreneurs believe in themselves for the rest of my life. That's never gonna change. But how I do it is gonna change a million times. Now I'm doing IG Lives, right? Was Instagram even around 10 years ago? I don't know. I wasn't on it. If it was, I wasn't making content at all. I would never say this is how I'm gonna be spending my day in 2020. But. Now apply that same thing going forward. 2030, maybe Instagram's dead by 2030. Maybe YouTube is dead by 2030. Maybe we're all holograms or robots. I don't know. But if we're all half cyborgs, Evan Carmichael is going to be a half cyborg spreading belief for entrepreneurs. <laughs> right? So in my new book, Built to Serve, I go through the who, why, how, right? Your who is your most important core value. Mine is believe. Your why, your purpose comes from your pain. That's never gonna change. I wanna help entrepreneurs for the rest of my life. Believe, back to my who. And then the, the how will change. The how is always gonna change. This, this is why long-term planning um, really works if you're growing because your how is gonna change a million times. So figure out your who and your why and then be flexible in the how. Good luck. Uh, Alifa B. Gum Official. All right. I tried doing against the wall handstand but I hurt, but I fell and hurt myself a little. I'm too scared to try now. You know, being scared isn't a good enough reason. Just be smarter, right? So start, what's a smaller step in? You have a friend help you. You have a, a parent help you. You use supports. I mean, I don't know how to do a handstand, but you can find out pretty easily on YouTube. Safest way to do a handstand for beginners, right? Type that in and find it. Being scared is not a good enough reason. Period. Don't teach you. This is the greatest lesson of all time right now. This is it. I'm scared to try now. Being scared to try things is the recipe for failure and disaster for the rest of your life. You do scary things. Just be smart. Go. Shankar, how can I find whether I'm operating at my full potential, which I always wanted to do? You're not, and you never will. So how do you get better? How do you get closer to it? Um, again, I go through the who I help process, right? 
So for me, my who is belief. My biggest problem is always going to be a lack of belief. And so the best way forward is to always look at how can I surround myself with things, people, routines, habits, ideas, strategies that make me believe more. And the best way I know how to do that right now for me is through video because I love video. I'm a visual learner more than reading or audio. And so I'm doing it through YouTube. Right? It's the best thing I can find right now. But it's a constant struggle and battle to believe in myself to do the next thing. I can believe myself to come and do an IG Live where that might have been scary to me 10 years ago. But the next level of belief that's what I need to continue to go off and conquer. And same thing for you. So you never reach your full potential. You're not operating at your full potential. You don't want to be. You don't want to be. You want growth. But how do you grow and where do you grow? It's still going to be through the lens of your who, your one word, most important core value. Good luck. Hey, can I answer about the handstand? I was scared, but use some quick hacks to learn very quickly. Awesome. It doesn't matter though. Like you can find it. It's not about the how. There's tons of hows. Talk to Abhishek, go online, go to YouTube. This is where people fall down. The how is not the problem. How to do a handstand without hurting your neck is not the problem. That's not the problem. There's a million different ways to do it. The problem is a decision to do the scary thing. That's the problem. So the best thing you can do to help is say, go do the scary thing. I believe in you. Make it happen. That's what they need. Shankar, I wake up at 4 a.m. and sleep at 11. I still feel I'm not productive. Productivity has very little to do with uh, how much you sleep. So great, you're you're sleeping, what is that, 11 hours? Uh, Sorry, seven hours? So you think if you slept six hours, this is where people really screw up on their sleep. So if you're sleeping seven hours a day, awesome. If you're not productive in, in those 17 hours that you're awake, right? If you sleep for seven, you're awake for 17. What makes you think that moving to now 18 hours of being awake, now you're gonna be productive. So by sleeping an hour less, you weren't productive during the day already, but moving from 17 to 18 hours with an hour less sleep and being more tired, now you're gonna be productive? People focus on the wrong thing. The answer isn't wake up an hour early yet. The answer is be more productive with the time you're awake. Even if you sleep eight hours a day, you're awake for 16 hours a day. What are you doing in those 16 hours? Are you gonna tell me that in those 16 hours, you're crushing it, you're productive, you're kicking butt, you're not wasting time, you're super focused? No way. Step into your life and examine it and look at all the wasted time. You're spending hours, hours of wasted time every single day, not being focused, not being present, not being productive. Fix that before you worry about waking up an hour early. Got me a little little bit of a rant, a little bit of a rant this morning. I like it. Uh, What do we got? Omid, how can I get story views with hashtags? Again, I just got views with hashtags last year. Story hashtags for Instagram is super wonky. It's it's nowhere near consistent and not getting the same results as before. Um, I barely am even putting hashtags in my stories. So um, I either suck and and everybody's crushing it and I'm not, or it's just not as valuable as as it used to be. I, I used to find the best results picking one big hashtag that I want to rank for, but recently, the views from hashtag stories has just been terrible. So I haven't even bothered putting them in. So um, if somebody's crushing it right now, amazing, go learn from them and then teach me how to do it. Omid, I appreciate you. Okay, what else? Steven Smith, SRQ. As an introvert, when did you decide to become a public servant to our communities? Um, By accident. You know, the first, the first thing was when I did a speech in Mexico City. I was uh, speaking at the APEC Summit, which is an international uh, government body, I guess, in my country. I just sold my company. I was 22. 
and my country, Canada, picked me to go represent the country as the young entrepreneur. And I had to do some speaking there, talking about entrepreneurship and success as a young person to talk to other young people who were at the event. And, um, and then that led to a speaking gig in Brunei, and then that led to me wanting to do more here in Toronto. And it was just the idea of, I was scared to do it. I, I'd never craved the spotlight and still don't. I don't, I don't um, love being on stage from the like, hey, look at me. Um, I still fight like, who am I, uh, ego, all that stuff. It's not about me, it's about the message. But the, the idea that I'm actually being selfish not sharing my story, I'm actually being selfish not getting up on stage because I have a message that can help the people who are watching, uh, that switch from ego to service is the thing that gave me the confidence to, to get up on stage and continue to do what I'm doing. Uh, we got a couple minutes left. Hey, uh, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. What advice would you give to a 16-year-old teenager if he wants to become an entrepreneur? Start. Find the smallest possible way and get started. This is, this is great for not just a 16-year-old and not just for being an entrepreneur. Teach yourself that when you come up with an idea, your idea is a genius. You're a genius. Start, by, start there. You're a genius, Ryan. You're amazing. You've got Michael Jordan-level talent at something. You're going to be the best in the world at something. But it's probably not what your parents did, and it's probably not what you're going to school for right now. And that's okay. But you've got to find it. How do you find it? By testing, by trying, by tasting, by doing. You'll never figure out if you're a great entrepreneur by reading textbooks. right? You'll, you'll never learn really how to do a handstand just by watching videos. Like You've got to do it. You've got to do it. So, so teach yourself that you are a genius. You have amazing ideas. And so start. Find the smallest possible way and just get started. Whatever your idea is for business, there's a big version that's going to take years to make and venture capital and, and all these you know, requirements and team and everything. It's a big version of your dream. And there's also a super tiny version that you can start on right now. Focus on the super tiny version right now and go get started. It's the best thing you can teach yourself. Okay, let's get one more and then we're gonna, we're gonna, it's gonna end because I've been going live for an hour. It's crazy how quickly it goes. Um, Arf Munava. Uh, which time do you wake up? How can you wake up soon? I don't have an alarm in the morning, so it depends on just how well I sleep. I did a sleep, st- a sleep study and they, the doctors want me sleeping eight and a half hours a night. Um, I don't usually get eight and a half hours a night. Uh, just depends on, cause I don't, my quality of sleep isn't fantastic. Um, but I don't sleep to an alarm. So we usually go to bed at, we usually start winding down at 10. I'll take the dogs out at 10, uh, come back up, uh, you know, just evening routine and then be sleeping by 11 typically. And then I'll wake up around seven ish or seven thirty. So I guess that's eight and a half hours. So I'm getting my eight and a half hours. Um, but I don't wake up to an alarm. I don't have anything important in my calendar until 10.30 every day. Um, And I I think that's good. It works for me. Again, stop focusing on when you wake up. Stop focusing on getting less sleep and start focusing on being more productive during the day that you have. So today's my YouTube day. We did this live, which was awesome. I appreciate you, thank you guys. Now I'm about to go be insanely productive on building my YouTube channel. We're going to crush out tons of videos, next level strategy, new thumbnails, new video titles, everything all day long. And I hope you take that energy and you pour it into being productive today. Teach yourself that you can be focused, that you can be productive, that you can be on point, that you can be present and go make yourself proud with the effort you're putting in today. Because if you did that every day, you'll end up achieving way more than you thought you could. And you don't have to wake up an hour earlier. Guys, thank you for the love. Appreciate you. Continue to believe. And I'll see you again tonight. We're doing IG Live starting at 6.30. Three of them back to back to back while I play League of Legends if you want to come in. Have a great Tuesday. Much love, guys. Believe.